So it's the 40th anniversary of the Jailbreak mm. album this year. What memories does um, that bring back for you on making that album when you listen to it? That was a really pressurized uh, album to make. Mm -hmm. uh, we had everybody and their grandmother telling us, this is your last shot. You, you don't come up with the goods on this one, you guys are done, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, ob obviously no pressure there. I mean, we got it from the record company, we got it from the management, so we were probably getting it from fans but didn't want to listen to that. So <clears throat> we went into rehearsal and demo mode in earnest. Yeah. Uh, on the uh, the jailbreak album just just hoping that that something was going to stick now we didn't uh pick the single uh the record company didn't pick a single uh so we just threw it out there just to see what was going to stick right and these two disc jockeys in louisville kentucky mm -hmm. Latched on to the boys are back in town and loved it to death and just kept playing it and playing it and playing it to the point where other radio stations around that area in the region, they grabbed onto it, they started playing it, and it, you could see it spreading wider and wider until it, it just engulfed the whole of America. So, and that's kind of when the record company stepped in and uh, started to do some promotion on yeah. this thing, you know, to get They're some like, sort of claim on it. Yeah. <laughs> see, we did work it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you didn't. I, I don't know how you can be creative like that when you know this is your last shot. For me, it would make me go blank. Uh, I think it, what it did is it uh, really made us focus mm. in a big way. With you know, fear has a has a funny way of of treating you, <laughs> and I think it was it was it had a positive effect on us. Clearly, you know, yeah. and one thing I've always wondered about um, the track "Jailbreak" is is "Jailbreak" a metaphor for a party, or not? What, well, the boys are back in town. Is you know yeah. that that's the that's a party song. Jailbreak? No, the you actual, know. How is the, a jail, there's going to be a jailbreak. That, yeah. That line, it's like somewhere around, well, how's it go? Something, there's going to be a jailbreak somewhere. Somewhere in this town, yeah. right? Well, okay. <laughs> Phil, somewhere in this town, there's going to be a jailbreak. But is it, is uh, a jailbreak meant to be a party? I, no, I don't, I don't think it is. I'd have to look at the lyrics again to try to figure that one out. But it was part of a concept that Phil had. This was going to be a, like a concept album. He, if you look at the back of the album, he's written all the liner notes and you know where the space guys come from and all mm -hmm. that and the overlords and they're yeah. going to take over the world and all this kind of stuff. But uh, he quickly got over that one after about three tracks and I thought, nah, nah this is going to be a concert. But I kind of like those work. liner notes so we'll keep them in, you know. Okay. <laughs> I know everyone talks about Jailbreak, but it's also the 40th anniversary of Johnny the Fox as well. Is it really? Yeah, it was. Like, I think um, Jailbreak was out in, earlier in the year. And we did two the albums Fox that in year. In one year, yeah, and Johnny the Fox was right. like September or something, wasn't right. it? I guess that one gets kind of swept under the con does, uh, carpet a little bit. <laughs> so what happened? I mean, you say like Jailbreak was like, yeah, this is make or break for you. So then you were like, okay, well, we'll make another one at the same time as well while we're on a roll. Well, we had written so many songs. Like I say, the fear had gotten inside of us, yeah. you know, so we just kept writing and writing and writing. We had almost enough for... Um, another album <clears throat> and I think what happened was the uh, the record company in England and the manager when they heard it thought, well I don't know we can't take any chances on it I think we might let's just let's do another one I mean we got the song so let's go ahead and do it right so we had to I think write maybe four more songs actually complete the okay. uh, Johnny the Fox album so so I think that's why that's it came down like that. That's a long time ago to remember that stuff. <laughs> You're doing all right. I was chatting to Jim Fitzpatrick. Who yes. He did the album artwork for you that's on right. that. And he said that when he was asked to design the, the cover art, he didn't have a title or anything. And apparently Phil said to him, just, uh, oh, let's just call it Johnny the Fox. And he had said, well, there isn't a track on there called Johnny the Fox. But there is a track on there called Johnny. Well, they, they, these are uh, two real characters. Uh, Johnny the Fox and Jimmy the Weed. Yeah. They were in a, uh, how do we say, a illegal gang in up in uh, Manchester, right? Right. And I won't tell you the name of the of, of the gang, but uh, suffice it to say, they were really great guys, even for what they did for okay. a living, right? Really great guys, and I, I think they made just a big impression on Phil, so he wrote this song about Johnny the Fox meets Jimmy the Weed, and we put kind of a kind of a funk beat to it. I mean, if I, yes, it was a funk beat. Yeah. Kind of weird to say that word even funk, now, right? Yeah, funk, funk beat. beat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm insane. 
And um, it's the 30th anniversary as well of, of Phil's death. Right. Um, what do you think his legacy is? Uh, writing great songs. Mm. You know, uh, he had a great way of phrasing. Also, his vocal phrasing was something that uh, I certainly hadn't heard before. Uh, you know, you would read the line and you think, oh, how is he going to phrase that? And, oh, that's how he's going to do it. You know, it's, uh, he, had a, he, had a, he had a cool way of doing it, right? Yeah. But it, it was his uh, sense of uh, um, being able to rhyme certain words that a lot of people hadn't rhymed before, right, in, in a certain subject matter. So uh, I think that'll be, you know, a, a big legacy of his is just the songwriting, if for nothing else. Yeah his songwriting yeah so have you got a favorite uh, favorite riff of Finn Lizzy that you like playing oh uh, there's there's way too many to go down the you know the favorite route I, I always say if you <clears throat> I, I get the question I get a lot is what's your favorite track you know mm. and, uh, I don't think you can really have a favorite track because once you're up on stage and you've already done that song it's like, well, the rest of the set downhill, my favorite track is gone. I can't, I'm not having any fun anymore. <laughs> so I, there, there's certain aspects of a lot of the catalog that I, that I, I really love. Right? Uh, maybe I don't like the whole song, but there, you know, I can't wait to get to that part. That part. You know? Okay, so maybe it's easier if I ask you, is there a song that you don't like playing? You like it. Yeah, but you don't well, like no, there, 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 live, there is, and we don't play them live. And that's why. Yeah, okay, that's right. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get you know, Jimmy DeGrasso is forever saying, you know, let's play Renegade, you mm. know. Well, we tried that, Jimmy, and it didn't really work, you know. He goes, yeah, but here it is on YouTube, and you can see it, it actually really does work, you know. So it's like on these shows that, we're, that we've got coming up, yeah. I, I'm thinking that... Uh, you know, maybe we should go back and go a little bit deeper in the catalog for a couple of songs. Yeah. The, the songs that you know were, that aren't in the regular set. So you know, throw a little throw a little danger on the road there, and let's let's see what happens. So we're throwing sets at each other back and forth, uh, email wise. You know, so you, we're adjusting all the time. So are you going to cr um, cross your whole catalog? Do you think for for like the tours that you're doing, you've got loads coming, quite a few, and you've got Rambling Man in July. Germany, yeah. we've got Sweden, uh, mm -hmm. Spain. Uh, well, uh, wow, you know the whole catalog. It, it, that that gets a little tough because. Uh, uh, there's a certain core of songs that I that we all know that people want to hear, right? Yeah. So if you start adding too much, the set's going to go on too long, and people are going to get bored with it, and they're going to get out of here, you bums, you know. <laughs> so and you want to play the songs that you know people are really familiar with. Uh, they you know paid good money to to have a good yeah. time, and they don't want to sit there going, I didn't know that was a Thin Lizzy song. What the heck is that? Oh, but I, I like that stuff. I don't think you should offer everyone what they want. You should teach them as opposed to, you know, <laughs> this, no, this is what's good. <laughs> I'd love to hear you play the whole Jailbreak album. Wow. That's what I'd like to see you do. Wow. Okay. Let me, let me get on the phone get on, Yeah, you work on that <laughs> one, okay? <laughs> um, so what's next for Scott Gorham? Well, we've got in, I've got Ricky and Damon coming to London. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be doing their uh, acoustic uh, set. Uh, in about a month's time over here and they're going to come over with me for about uh, four days and we're going to start gluing together the next Black Star Writer album. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently Ricky's got all the lyrics written already. I mean brilliant the, the ATM lyric machine there you know but uh, <clears throat> so we'll do that we'll do that for about three or four days yeah. uh, then we'll go off and do the uh, the Thin Lizzy shows with uh, with uh, uh, all the other guys mm -hmm. and then in August we fly up to Nashville again and do uh, BSR number three. Oh my god. So yeah it's gonna be pretty cool. And, and would you ever think about doing a solo album again? You know I, I'm not uh, really I don't look at myself as, as a solo guy. I, I love being in a band and my whole thing is I want to be in the best band in the world. You know, I, you know, personal. You've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but you know, the, the whole personal achievement thing, it's really never been on my menu. Uh, I, I, I don't really kind of worry about things like that. Mm. I, I guess I don't have the, the ego for it or something. Maybe I'm just chicken. I don't know. No, maybe you just, <laughs> you work better with other musicians like that. I, I, I think I own. do. I like, I like, I like the bounce. 
Uh, I know other uh, of other musicians who it takes them four years to get their solo album out because they sit there by themselves and they keep second, third, and fourth guessing themselves. Yeah. You know, so it kind of goes on forever. But when you got like a partner, you're like bang, bang, bang. You're just bouncing things off all the time, so yeah. it goes a lot quicker. Scott, it's a pleasure. Well, thank to you, you as always. Thank you. Thank you for having me.